I'm Kevin Harnett. Coming up next, it's a special edition of Secrets of Little Chefs from the Kentucky State Fair. Coming up, the chef from Churchill Downs makes fair food like you've never seen or tasted before. Plus, Tim Laird is beefing up the Bloody Mary, and it's all made in Kentucky. So come with us for this special edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs from the Kentucky State Fair right now. And welcome to the Kentucky State Fair for this special edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett. We're here on Wave 3 News Day. A large crowd always comes out to meet their favorite news personalities, play a little cornhole, win a t-shirt, take home a cup. It's a fun day. Something that makes the day even better, learning the secrets from one of Louisville's best chefs. Wave 3 News is the home for the Kentucky Derby. And how fitting that today on our cooking stage, we have the chef from Churchill Downs. What do you say we get the show started with my co-host, Tim Lair? Thanks, Kevin! I'll tell you what, we are here at the Kentucky State Fair, which is a Kentucky icon. Down the street is another Kentucky icon, Churchill Downs. So we're bringing them both together because today I have the executive chef from Churchill Downs. He's been on our show before. He's the one and only Chef Dave Danielson! How you doing, buddy? Good, Chef. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me. How about this wonderful crowd out there? Unbelievable. They are awesome, aren't they? We got a big crowd out here. It's another busy day at the fair. Another great day at the Kentucky State Fair. So uh, this is going to be interesting. By the way, uh, we're doing all beef dishes today, and this is going to be an interesting take on something Tell us about the first dish, Chef. So, you know, this, this dish is is perfect dish for anyone who has no absolute cooking knowledge at all, okay? <laughs> That's good, uh, I'll tell you what. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little uh, Kentucky version of a beef carpaccio, okay? You take a cast iron skillet. I brought a small version out yeah. here. Yeah, I like you this. You know, I, I like was this. making this this morning in my kitchen and I had a big skillet and the smoke <laughs> just kept billowing. I thought, oh. I'll probably set off an alarm, so we brought the mini version. I like that. But I'll tell you what, the greatest part about this is you can't overcook it, okay? Okay. That's so always good we're going to get know. this fire going. Essentially, what we're doing is we're really, literally making ash. So we're going to use rosemary here. You get a cast iron skillet going. You're going to watch this in a minute. It gets really, really hot. And this is just going to ignite and continue to burn. Um, until it's completely burned up. Once it's done, what you do is you take it and put it in a coffee grinder, okay. mini coffee grinder, and you wind up with this really, really fine powder. I've got a little bit here already. I'm gonna throw it in the bowl. And then what we do is we start off with a beef tenderloin, okay? So what I've done here is I've taken a center cut beef tenderloin, we've wrapped it in plastic, twisted it tight, to get really nice form, and then we stuck it in the freezer. Hey, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to just take it, coat it in this ash, roll it back and forward. So you, and you're coating the whole thing, Chef. You're yeah. just getting it all in there. So we get all that ash all over it. We're going to set this off to the side here. So. We've got the beef ready for the carpaccio. Okay. Now we need something to put it on. So there's a couple different ways you can go here. I've got some Yukon Gold potato chips here. You can also just do a crostini. So I just took a baguette. We sliced it thin, put a little bit of herb oil on it, a couple minutes in the oven, made it nice and crispy. This again, this is great for this, okay? So what I like to do as well is put a little uh, topping on there. So what we've done is we made a little roasted garlic aioli. Very, very simple. So aioli is really just a fancy name for mayonnaise. So we took some garlic cloves, put them in a little bit of olive oil, wrapped them in tin foil, put them in the oven, roasted them till they're nice and soft and sweet. Put that in a little blender, blended it up, add a little bit of mayonnaise, and this is what we get. All right. 
Let's throw this together. So what all we're right. going to do, you're going to take your beef tenderloin. You've got it all crusted. And, you know, when it's nice and frozen like this, it's very easy to cut. What we're going to do, take it. I'm going to cut just a little bit off to get it nice and flush. So you can see now we've got this nice dark kind of crust on the outside. We're just going to shave really what? nice little pieces. Wow. I mean, you're not even using one of those professional uh, slicers, chef. You've got your own uh, chef and knife. This is it. Look at that. So really, really thin, just nice kind of shaved pieces. Again, if you start cutting it and it starts getting soft, you can throw it right back in the freezer. Okay, so it'll harden up again. Then it'll, it'll harden up again, cut. and then it's really easy to cut again. And then also, I've got to say, that's probably a really sharp knife, which there's another secret. Always use sharp knives, right? Yes. You set that off to the side. Wipe this down. We're going to start off with a couple chips. We'll make a few of these. I've got the beef ready to go. We're going to take a little bit of the beef, put a little piece of beef on each one. Oh, this is great. So these could be bite-sized. You can so actually. It's a great little appetizer, you know, especially in the summer. You don't want to get out there and cook. If you've got some extra, you know, if you buy in beef, if you got a little bit of extra, you can take this, throw it in the freezer, and make this. The other great thing about this is all this stuff can be done ahead and wait till the very, very end, throw these together. So what we're going to do, a little bit of uh, fresh pepper over the top of these. We're going to top each one. Wow. With a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of salt. I like the salt you're using. This is kind of a... Really nice flake sea salt. Uh, melts in your mouth. Great flavor. So, we're going to top each one with a little bit of the aioli. You said, again, that has uh, a little bit of garlic. A little bit of roasted garlic. Mayonnaise just mixed. Beautiful. Top each one with a mushroom chip. I've got a little bit of microgreens, our little fresh herbs to top it off. That's right. If you're having a steak dinner, why not have a little greens on the side? But it's going to be on the top. <laughs> right. So we're going to top each one with a little green. So there we go. Chef, a little bit of rosemary ash beef carpaccio with a potato crisp. I call this downtown triple crown. That is awesome, Chef. I'm telling yeah. you, great. Well, there's plenty more to come on this special edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. The cooking continues inside on a perfect weather day for the Kentucky State Fair. Great food, great crowd, and up next, Chef Danielson reveals the secrets. It's a Kentucky twist on stir fry using watermelon. You don't want to miss it. Coming up next, right here on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Welcome back to this special edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett. You've been watching Chef Dave Danielson from Churchill Downs and Tim Laird whip up one of a kind fair food right here on the main stage. Coming up next, they're putting a Kentucky twist on an Asian stir fry. Now it's using watermelon. What do you say we get the secrets to that right now? Timmy? Thanks, Kevin. Chef, this sounds exciting. You're actually going to incorporate Kentucky watermelon into our beef dish. We are. So this is a very uh, summer-like kind of Kentucky Asian dish. We're, we're bringing it all together here. <laughs> I love it. So we got our wok pan. We get it very, very hot. Start it off with a little oil. 
get a little beef strips going in there. That's the sizzle you want to hear too, because one of the secrets to Asian cooking or stir frying, hot pan, then put the oil in there, get exactly. it to a hot smoke point. And what we're really just looking to do is kind of put a sear on it. And what we're looking for is a little caramelization. So the caramelization, when you get that beef nice and brown, that's what gives the flavor. That's what's gonna give it that rich, nice beef flavor. So we're just throwing this around in here for a minute, starting to get a little bit of uh, caramelization. This is really still raw, just a little sear on it. I'm gonna take it, put it off here to the side to hold it for a minute. And then what we're gonna do is start the sauce, start the rest of the dish. So we're gonna give it a little bit more oil we're gonna start off with a little bit of sliced red pepper, or red, red onion rather. Get that red onion in there. Start sauteing a little bit, sweat it down. So when you cook with onions, you really wanna start sweating them. And what that means is you're gonna put them in a pan, you want them to start getting translucent. So they get nice and clear color. And you can smell them. I'm, uh, they're also seasoning that pan with a lot of flavor too. So everything Absolutely. you add, is gonna have that flavor in there. I've got a little bit of garlic. So we're gonna throw a little bit of minced garlic in. I've got some ginger. We're gonna get a little bit of ginger in there. And that's fresh ginger, it looks like you. Fresh did. ginger, we just diced it up. So we're gonna get all this going here for a minute. Wow, that smells so good. You can start yes. to smell the garlic, the ginger. It's also important when you're cooking with garlic, you want to watch because if it starts to get too dark, it gets very, very bitter. So how you control that is either, you know, a lot of times you finish dish with garlic. At the end. Or if you're going to use it like this to build off it, you start to put your liquid in. So I just have some marin, some sweet. And this is something you can buy it at uh, most yeah. grocery stores. You don't even have to go to Asian stores. No, but, this uh, is, I didn't, I bought this at a big name grocery store this morning. <laughs> so. We've got a little bit of marmarin. I've got a little bit of hoisin sauce. And I like the way you explain that. That's kind of the uh, Asian barbecue sauce, the yeah. hoisin. I'm putting a little sambal in here. So we got a little bit of spice. And that's got a little heat on it. It's so. got a little heat, but you know what? With this dish, with the ginger, with the watermelon, really cools it off. When you see all this come together, you'll be amazed. We're gonna add a little bit of soy sauce to this. A little saltiness. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to add salt because really the uh, soy brings a little bit of salt with right. it. Right. We're going to add that beef back into this dish. We've got that cooking in the sauce. I've got some snow peas. You could do this with snow peas, snap peas. We've blanched them really quick. They're going to come in here, come up to temperature. And now we're just going to get that going, kind of toss it around. Let that sauce work a little bit. So you'll see this sauce is still uh, a little bit watery, right? Right. Some of the liquid comes out of the beef, some of the liquid comes out of the vegetables. So I've got just a teeny bit of water and cornstarch, and if you dump that in, what happens, once it comes to a boil, that's gonna thicken that sauce up a little bit. So what you wanna do is you wanna do it with that water, thins it out, the sauce is really coming together now. It's really thickening up, bringing all those flavors together that you had in the pan. You can smell the ginger, you smell the garlic, oh. you smell everything coming together. We've got the heat off, everything's ready to go. We're gonna add in a little bit of this watermelon. Give it a quick toss. What a great, I mean, because I, I, I love watermelon. And I'll tell you, when, when it's in season, uh, it, it is just nothing better. That looks absolutely fabulous. And like I said, you did that at the end and just stirred it in quickly because you right. don't want the watermelon to cook. Everything else is fully cooked. We're gonna garnish it off with a little bit of cilantro leaves around the side. That gives another just little bit of fresh flavor. And there you go. Kentucky stir fried beef uh, with a little watermelon and, and snap peas. Tim, everybody's enjoying hearing the secrets and thousands more out here enjoying the Kentucky State Fair. Just don't go anywhere. Coming up next, everybody knows beef. It's what's for dinner.
believe it or not, it makes a good cocktail too. Tim Laird shares the secrets when we come back. Welcome back to this special edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett. I'm outside enjoying the sights and sounds of the State Fair. My good friend Tim Laird, he's inside enjoying the smells and taste of the Kentucky State Fair. And he's about to reveal some secrets to beefing up a Bloody Mary. Tim, we can't wait any longer. Let's get the secrets. Thanks, Kevin. I'll tell you what, I'm going to totally transform the Bloody Mary, and Chef, we're doing it with beef. This is what I call my beefed up Bloody Mary. It's phenomenal, I, and everything from right here in Kentucky. This is what I call my favorite part of the show. <laughs> it is, the cocktail <laughs> section. Anyway, here's how I make it, and here's why it's all Kentucky. First of all, this is Old Forester, America's first bottled bourbon back in 1876. I'm gonna start out with that. So about an ounce and a half of that goes in. To that, I'm going to add, made right here, Bloody Kentucky I love uh, it. from a uh, farmer, Dan Holloway, right in uh, Middletown, Kentucky. And what I love about this, he developed this. Well, you know this, Chef. Yeah. He developed. It's great with vodka, but even better with bourbon. How smart is that? He's a smart that's, guy. That's <laughs> why I gravitate to this. So, all made in Kentucky, the Bloody Kentucky uh, Bloody Mary mix, and that goes in. Boom. Then. I cooked off a uh, beef tenderloin the night before, and I saved some of the uh, au jus, they call it, right? Uh, all, all the juice that comes in there. Yeah, yeah. Why throw this away? This is going to add more flavor to go with the Bloody Mary mix and that bourbon. So that's going to go in. No nice. waste. And then, finally, I'm going to give this a quick stir. And for my garnish, I no celery it. here, baby. We're going beef. beef. I'm taking my beef tenderloin putting it on a skewer, and that's going to be my garnish to the beef of Bloody Mary. That goes in. Even give that a little stir, that beef flavor will nice. go throughout the entire Bloody Mary. This looks Let's, like lunch. It, it does. You know what? It is. It's lunch in a glass. Everything <laughs> there, you need it. Cheers, Chef, Cheers. to Thanks, you, buddy. buddy. Let's see how we did. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> that is beefed up, baby. Mmm. Oh, Chef, thank you so much awesome. for uh, thank coming you for here. Me. Show it's us some great, great secrets. What a great crowd. Isn't it great? Chef Dave Danielson. <laughs> Churchill down. Oh, we have had a great time out here at the Kentucky State Fair. We hope you've enjoyed the secrets from Louisville Chef Dave Danielson from Churchill Downs. We appreciate you watching. We thank the Kentucky Beef Council. We thank Cisco of Louisville, and we thank you for watching. On behalf of Tim Laird, myself, and all of the folks at BMB Productions, we'll see you next time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Wave three day at the fair is the best day for secrets of Louisville chefs. <laughs>